Welcome to our USF Dunn's final edition of our USF Dunn's Weekend Review and Preview, our final edition of the 2019 wrap-up season for the USF Dunn's on Dunn's TV. And you're listening, of course, on anchor.fm slash ASM Bay Area for our weekly podcast. Our final, this is our second segment, if you want to listen to podcast Weekend Review from the week of, from the week of May 17th through the week of May the 19th, 2019, the Don's season came to an end. They were able to, um, Don's finishing the season in West Coast Conference play, 15-12. and 12, And they finished a tie for fourth place in the West Coast Conference with LMU. Their shot, uh, the Don's coming in on Saturday night with a still a shot to going into the final weekend. With a shot to get into the West Coast Conference tournament in Bear Island Park in Stockton. But all that was totally exterminated with LMU's win over the Gonzaga Bulldogs on Saturday night. And even though the teams both finished with a 15-12 and 12 record, the the Lions owned the head-to-head tiebreaker by taking two out of three to the Dons in their only home defeat, series defeat, series at, at, up at um, on the hilltop. But uh, also the Dons finishing, um, taking two winning a series doubleheader sweep over the Northridge Matadors of Cal State Northridge, including winning the rubber match on Sunday on Senior Day, sending the seniors on a positive note. The Dons finished in season 30 and 23, the most wins by a Dons team since 2013 when they last went to the NCAA Regionals and at large bed. So, Coach, um, lots uh, happening. What's happening now? The recap of the, let's recap the season. They just came up just a buck short. Of getting back to the to the island. Yeah, you know, but you don't you never know which one of those games it was or which one of those plays. So it's just all about playing hard. But yeah, finishing 15 and 12, tied with Loyola. Uh, you know, probably got ourselves to blame, not winning that series against them at home. Mm-hmm. It was a highly contested series, and mm-hmm. obviously we know it's going to come down to one of those teams or or someone like that. You know, and uh, we didn't play well. Uh, on that Saturday at BYU, we had a chance to win. We gave up a few leads. Could have been the San Diego San loss. San Diego, 4 to nothing the... lead right there. It was right there. And just like, you know, the great, right, I always say it here, the, the great line by the great Ben Scully, came up just a buck short. Yeah, we did. And we came up short this year, too, as well, you know. 15 and 12 doesn't get us in. And um, just one of those things, you know. We, we had... Uh, we had some really good highlights during the season. You know, offensively, I thought the club was was plenty good enough at times. Uh, defensively, we were a little short at a few positions where we didn't play uh, like we were capable of. Uh, pitching wise, uh, we had some great efforts. Uh, we just uh, we just were a little short there too. And uh, I think when you look at it, 30 wins is a good season, and I'm I'm proud of the guys. Qu- equivalent of winning nine, equivalent of winning 90 games in Division One in major leagues. 30 wins compared with the 90. Um, but, um, I mean, I did look at some of the great numbers. I mean, uh, as uh, Jonathan Allen led the, one, was the home run champion, it's going to probably finish in the top five for the West Coast Conference uh, Player of the Year. Uh, also, some other contributors, uh, as well, if you're watching on our po- listening to our podcast, we'll recap uh, what the, the, some of the team awards, in case you miss it, on Don TV. But, um, some of the individual awards also, um, you know, Riley Arnita was right up there with wins, and then he just ran out, the tank ran out down the stretch, and then, you know, the pitching injuries with injuries to the, to the weekend stars was a, was a deciding factor as well. Yeah, you know, it was tough to lose Landon. Uh, I thought he was going to be one of the best pitchers on Sundays in the conference. Um, you know, Nishak not being able to give us quality starts throughout the season, that was tough. Slominski being hurt most of the season and, and coming back and really pitching well late in the year. Last game but, on the, on the uh, hilltop. Wasn't, wasn't completely himself. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I thought we had some, some great performances. Uh, I thought Pham was great. I thought Ornito was great at times. Uh, he did some wonderful things. And obviously when you, when you look at... Uh, when you look at the season, Washburn did some great things. Joey Steele breaks the 
the saves record or comes close to it, you know. So that'd be uh, right up there with uh, Patrick McGuigan as the uh, single season record. Yeah, definitely. I thought well, for, for another Joey. for another time, uh, sometime in the spring or in the fall, when we have our we work on our all decade team, I'm definitely gonna have um, you gotta have uh, have him on that on that closer. Yeah, you know, he he had a, he had a good year, so I'm excited about what he did and. Uh, you know, we had we had uh, we had a lot of good things that went on this year, and we're gonna build on that. You know, thirty win season, we're gonna we're gonna build on that. Uh, you know, fifteen and twelve, another winning record in conference. We're gonna build on that, and then we're just gonna keep on trucking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> great song by the great Eddie late Eddie Kendricks uh, from the Temptations. Uh, keep on trucking, but um, some other um, things. Um, you graduated some seniors, uh, and they got some all academic award awards. Uh, individual um, or actually a first team uh, we have here. Uh, Villa, Tyler Villa Roman, Robert Emery, Alex Fan. They all were named WCC honors. Uh, Allen, of course, was a first team. And then Robert Emery had a great had played very well down the stretch and was a, a also was on on the talk of him being the uh, Emery was named the Buster Posey Award watch list as well bang at team best three thirty three in conference play with twenty three runs bad inning two home runs and he was um, had one thousand fielding percentage and one hundred twenty eight chances he finished the season bang a team best three twenty with 17 multi-hit games, 10 multi-RBI performances, had four separate hitting streaks through at least eight games or more. I thought he had a great year. You know, obviously that was a big difference in, in why we were so successful with Allen and Emery and uh, Helen in the middle of that lineup. And, you know, I thought Rob was sensational catching-wise. Uh, deserved an opportunity to be on that first team in the conference. And, uh, you know... Uh, Excited that that he was able to put that year together, and uh, I look forward to a to a wonderful career for him at USF in the next year. Yeah, he's going to be back next year. I think he could be a prime candidate to be on that if he keeps on at the rate he's going. Could be a, a significant candidate uh, of the Giant Bench Award finalist next year. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, obviously uh, he uh, uh, he he was in there. You know, he was in. He was in, he was uh, up in the running and uh, didn't make it into the ten semifinalists, but. Uh, I think he deserves it with that 35% throwout percentage at second base, and probably, the fielding percentage, and what wow. he did uh, from a hitting standpoint. Probably the most demanding position in baseball, um, other in the infield behind the dish, and he, uh, you know, he really uh, had that stamina this year. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, excited about what Rob did, and uh, and looking forward to the future. Yep, and then also Tyler Villaroman had a great year, bag 300. Really solidified that position, the the leadoff position. He had a 1,000 fielding percentage and 62 chances. He, I mean, if you could put a blindfold on him, he will make every play out there in center field. Oh, Vela was great. You know, he made uh, he a lot of takeaways there. Uh, did some great things on the bases with the stolen bases. Obviously, he made some great strides offensively as a as a hitter as well. So uh, excited about his year. I think he's going to be one of the best defensive players in the conference. Yeah, he's going to be back next year. And then uh, Pham had a breakout year. Uh, he ended up uh, sophomore year, 90 strike uh, strikeout walk ratio, 90 to 28. Better 3-1 strikeout walk ratio through a team best 3.30 ERA. He uh, concluded his tenure on the Hilltop Sunday with a team-leading Eight in wins, and then um, so other, and then you had some guys make the all academic team in Portland. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, wonderful stuff by uh, Riley Ornito on the academic team, Jack Winkler. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few guys, but you got that stuff in front of you. But uh, yeah, one wonderful job academically by our guys, and uh, you know, Fam's year, wow, exceptional what he did, uh, what he did not only. Uh, you know, coming in relief, but as a starter, but uh, man, he made some great strides. I'm excited for him. Yeah, and then uh, how about uh, Julian Washburn uh, pick with the tops in the conference and wins right up there that top three range, top two. He uh, had had a sensation, sensational year. Yeah, you know, Wash uh, eight no boy, he was close, and uh, you know, he had a rough start against Cal that uh, led to that second. Uh, 
led to his actually first loss and then you know he had a rough outing at BYU but outside of that boy he was fabulous all year eight wins is a lot of wins and he also you know um could be that long man could be one of those midweek starters next year that's going to be you know something to, to kick around down the road yeah you know uh, could be another could, yeah could, could be, be good, another could, Evan could, Fredrickson could be a good starter for us could uh, could do some good things so I'm I'm excited for him and then you know, and then uh, Ornito's going to be the ace next year. I mean, hopefully, you know, if we get him and Nish- or Nishak and Barossa. What's the status on Barossa? He started. The, he's um, ahead of schedule. Yeah, you know, obviously he had the surgery, and uh, he's ahead of schedule. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, he'll be throwing sometime. Uh, Hopefully sometime in the fall where he can start playing catch and then sometime early next year he'll start getting off the mound in December and uh, you know who knows with Ornito maybe Riley gets his chance to play professionally and if he does yeah, best of luck to him uh, obviously that's something that uh, we hope he gets uh, whatever opportunity comes his way but if he comes back uh, we'll be excited to have him back and then we'll go from there okay and then uh, with that um, with that um now, as we flip the calendar, now we go into the off. What's going to be? Where do you guys go from here uh, this off season and beyond? As looking forward towards the the twenty twenty season. Well, you know, we got to get out there and recruit. Uh, we got to get everybody back healthy. We got to get everybody whipped into shape. We got to we got to win a lot of games to get back to fifteen wins, and uh, we got to win a lot of games to get back to thirty wins. So. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the drawing board a little bit, you know. Winkler will be back. He's an exceptional player. Right. Uh, Roman be uh, he'll be back. Yovetic will be back. Uh, Westerman will be back. Munoz will be back. Uh, Emery will be back. Uh, Barasa, who comes back hopefully healthy. Nishak comes back healthy. Uh, Barasa comes back and he's hopefully healthy. Ricky Yarada, uh Brandon Grime, who went down. He's really, so really we got a lot of pieces that will be back. Yeah, and then you, for third base, Arata has been been this um, improved, improved at that hot corner throughout down the stretch drive, making some very big key plays though. Yeah, Ricky's you I know mean, he's, he's, he's just been mastering his craft at third base. I mean, I mean, I want to do a piece with him sometime in the fall on the art of third base. I mean, the hot corner where you just you know. With the glove, this is <laughs> with the glove right here, you know, yeah. and it's really this is kind of like the Greg Nettles, Ray, uh, Mike Schmidt, George Brett, Ray Knight, um, Matt Williams type of glove. The, you know, you just he just picks them clean. He'd be picking them clean. Yeah, you know, then, uh, uh, Ricky's Ricky's worked hard. He's worked hard at his craft, and uh, I'm excited about what he's doing and. Uh, He's he's been a good player for us, so uh, really nice to 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 be uh, in a situation where he'll be back and help us defensively next year. And I know he'll improve offensively from where he was, and he put together a lot of really great at bats this year. So we're excited about him. Uh, I mean, I mean, he's like um, he must be probably watching some of those clips of Ron Washington on YouTube, um, how you, the fielding or something, because one, I mean, Ron reminds me of an Eric Chavez similar at that position. Yeah, you know, uh, he's uh, uh, he's done a great job, so uh, I'm excited for him. Got the ice cream. I mean, he got that, you know, scooping up vanilla ice cream on his glove. He could just pick him, though. Yeah, he and sure then, and then, you know, for Jack Winkler, he reminds me similar to like a Jeff Blazer of Atlanta, the way he plays at shortstop when uh, Jeff Blazer was in his prime with the Braves. You know, I remember seeing him through the early mid-90s. He just uh, picks him clean, picking him clean, and he just and swings a good bat, though, too. Yeah. And then, and then, um, and then, what's going to be? Uh, who's going to be some of the newcomers? You know, you're going to have to. Sit, we say goodbye to Helen, Allen. Uh, um, those are going to be two, um, two, um, two pieces, um, and Cordero as well. Yeah, we got we got a few pieces coming in. You know, obviously, uh, uh, we got a, a middle infielder coming in, um, Brock Bozet, brother of Bo Bozet, who played here in the program. Bo. His his younger brother. Yeah, we got we got a junior college player from uh, Marin, uh, right-handed pitcher Benz, who's going to come in and, and be able to help us. We got a few young guys, Rosalman and Burns, right-handed pitchers that are going to be able to help us. Um, obviously, we got two outfielders, ju- a junior college outfielder and a high school outfielder. So we got a lot of guys coming in. We'll wait till we they get here and and, and they get situated before we start talking about them, B. And they still uh, and you still uh, Anthony Diabora still uh, 
uh, calling you up trying to get some more players to come down now. Yeah, almost... and they had a good year too. So how yeah. did how did they do? They uh, they end up losing in the in the playoffs, but they had a good year. They they won the first round of the playoffs, and uh, Anthony's done a great job. And then speaking of good jobs, Greg Moore, uh, he was here on the hilltop last weekend. Um, your thoughts on Greg Moore? It was great to come back. All the former players, teammates, and pitchers under Greg Moore when they played Cal State Northridge. Yeah, you know, obviously great to see Greg and uh, to to have an opportunity to compete against him. And uh, he's he's a wonderful coach, and he's done a lot of good things for this program. So I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, and then um, and then also uh, also during the summer you'll be uh, also spend some time with Nico, and then you know, and then before you know it, the late mid late August the. The, uh, the 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 circus will be coming back because now with the with graduation all that's done, um, everybody the circus is uh, is gone though. Yeah. So yeah, it'll it'll be good to see Nico play and uh, and check in on him and and hopefully he's doing well and uh, obviously he's playing right now as we're doing this taping. So I'd like to kind of get back and watch his game sometimes. But uh, yeah, I, I wish the best. And uh, nothing, nothing, uh, no, no news, any, no further renovations on the Band Aid Diamond at this time. Everything is stand assuming, though, down the road. Yeah, to you. you know, eventually we got to build a hitting facility, B, and we got to get the locker rooms done. But uh, right now, uh, Benedetti's in pretty good shape. It's a nice kind place. Of, yeah, and I know the task is right now, the focus is on uh, Sobrato Center. I know Joan, and, and your thoughts on Joan replacing Scott Sidwell and. That's kind of a quick, easy transition. Oh, I think Joan's going to be fabulous. Uh, yep. She's. Uh, it's been a good transition for us. You know, obviously Scott did wonderful things. Oh yes, for the he program. did. I, I'm gonna miss Scott though. He he came here. He came in right into the fire when uh, eight years ago when he when this team won the conference uh, t- title on the final day of the season. Yeah, six years ago. Yeah. Or or won the con- well the outright against Gonzaga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, eight years ago is one year. And that was uh, technically, this is concluded, he concluded, what, eight, 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 nearly eight full years on the hilltop. Yeah, nice to have Scott here. I think Joan's going to do a wonderful job, and I think we're in great hands. Yeah, like, uh, like, uh, Joan is like that, is like your homeroom school teacher, uh, <laughs> uh, saw the, saw the other side of you when you got wrong against St. Mary's, but let's, uh, what are your thoughts of the WCC tournament as we're doing this taping, uh, uh, who you like coming out of uh, surviving out of the island up in Stockton? Well, you know, obviously I'm not going to pick BYU. We, we saw that they've already been eliminated. So and now as we're doing this taping, they're going to have to wait their fate uh, all weekend long. Sweating oh, they out. should if, get in, B. They should get in. They're, they, they're a good enough team. Yeah. Their RPI is good enough. The conference should have two teams. Whoever wins the tournament. Yes. And then obviously the, BYU. So uh, I think it's... I think they should be in. I I just think that's what the conference. You deserves. might get three, maybe get three if Gonzaga. If the well, if Gonzaga got a good RPI, they might get. They got a quality win against um, Oregon State, and if uh, St. Mary's, who could be um, a, a sleeper, who comes out of this, um, survive the the survival of the island up in uh, Stockton. You, we already know that Cal and Stanford's gonna um, gonna be going to the uh, tournament. That's guaranteed question is Stanford will they get a national they will be hosting but will they get a national seed to have home field throughout the play throughout the uh have it go through them for the super regionals that's the sixty four thousand dollar question Cal is pretty much just going to get in and the question is now could the Bay Area get three teams in that w- has not happened since uh I believe since 2011 it's been, St. Mary's got a chance to get one, get in there. And they got and, uh, that they're pitching. playing well, and, and really, obviously, as we're taping this, that game's going on. So, uh, right, you know, we're hard at work while the teams are playing. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I, I wish the best of luck to all those guys. But uh, we'll we'll see who comes out of that conference championship. Okay, coach. Well, that's um, thank you for another season. We just concluded our twenty first season together. And the final, um, kind of like the final with other outside of the fall news of the team, next year we'll be beginning our 22nd year and will be our third def- decade on the with the USF. Though we've been doing this since 1999, it'll be our third different decade. Yeah, you know, uh, excited, B. Thanks for all your help and thanks for all you do uh, to help the program and 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 give us the publicity that you do and. Uh, I look forward to uh, hopefully another decade. 
All right, Coach. Thank you, and you go on to have a nice summer. Thanks, B. That's Coach Nito Giratano, USF Duns, our final audio recap of the season. The Duns finishing the 2019 campaign 15-12 and 12 in West Coast Conference play, tied for fourth place, but they fall just a buck short. LMU won the tiebreaker. They finished 30-23. and 23. Let's recap the, the West Coast Conference. BYU 19-8. Gonzaga 18-9. St. Mary's 17-10, 34-20 overall. LMU and the Dons finished dead even at 15-12. And, and then San Diego, Pepperdine, Pacific, Portland, and Santa Clara rounding out the top 10. So the Dons will be at work. We'll be... Uh, in the offseason, giving you all the information on what's going to go on during the offseason as the Dons, we look ahead towards the 2020 season coming up. And we'd like to thank some people throughout the, throughout this season. Uh, we'd like to thank um, all the people. Of course, congratulations to Miss Joan McDermott. Um, also, um, the uh, media department with Mark Rivera, baseball information. Uh, also, like to thank. Uh, uh, also, not to forget uh, Matt Fontenot, who we we did some stuff for our USF men's basketball. Him. We also thank um, Vinny Longball, downtown Longball Longo, for his promotions, and we thank Mark Papadopoulos, Steve, and. Uh, and his uh, crew, game day crew, the best fine game day staff in college baseball. So we're going to um, – that's it from here. Uh, thank you for listening, watching Don's pre- and post-game and all our weekend review throughout the season. Unfortunately, it didn't work out what we all hoped for. The Don's will definitely be in the race next year. And, you know, we'll do it again next year in 2020. And then reminder coming up during the off season. It will be the Giratino Baseball Camp that's going to be coming up from June, coming up June 17th through the 21st, June 24th through the 28th, July 15th through the 19th, July 22nd through the 26th, August 12th through the 16th, ages 6 to 13. It'll be held at Benedict Diamond. And for more information, contact Ryan Burke at RJ Burke at USF. CA.edu. That's RJ Burke at USF CA.edu for more information. That's it for now. I'm Brian Professor B. Davis. Thank you for listening to USF Dunn's podcast and video. We can review all year long for the latest on USF Dons news and so much more throughout the offseason with the players and the upcoming MLB draft on June 2nd. Go to usfdons.com and check us out also at facebook.com slash Dons TV Network. That's it for now. I'm Brian Professor B. Davis. Thank you for watching the USF Dons Weekend Review and our season in review for 2019 on Dons TV. Dons TV in association with ASN Bay Area where every team has a fan and every fan has a voice, the Network Home of Champions. Have a great summer, everybody. We'll talk to you again sometime in the fall.